hepatitis refers to inflammation of the hepatocytes from various causes. In this video, we're going to cover viral hepatitis. Hepatitis A only causes an acute hepatitis. It doesn't lead to a chronic disease. Hepatitis A is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus spread through contaminated fecal matter. A vaccine is available for hepatitis A. Hepatitis B can cause both acute and chronic hepatitis. It is a partially double-stranded DNA virus that is spread through blood and other bodily fluids, including semen and vaginal fluid. It can also be transmitted from mother to fetus. Hepatitis B is often transmitted through intravenous drug use or sexual contact. There is a vaccine also available for hepatitis B. We'll also cover hepatitis D here because hepatitis D is known as a subviral satellite because it can only replicate in the presence of hepatitis B. This can occur in a situation known as co-infection where an individual contracts both hep B and hep D simultaneously or a superinfection where an individual who already has chronic hepatitis B becomes infected with hepatitis D. The prognosis in these scenarios is worse than having hepatitis B alone. It can cause an acute disease or it can become chronic. Hepatitis D is a negative sense single-stranded RNA virus. It's transmitted similarly to hepatitis B and is most commonly transmitted via intravenous drug use in the developed world. No vaccine is currently available specifically for hepatitis D, but giving the hepatitis B vaccine is protective. Hepatitis C is the most prevalent blood-borne illness in the US and becomes chronic in approximately 80% of patients. It is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus and is mostly spread through intravenous drug use. It's transmitted through blood and other fluids, but usually involves some form of parental exposure. No vaccine is currently available for hepatitis C, but there are some promising results from research. Hepatitis E is similar to hepatitis A in that it usually produces an acute and typically self-limiting disease, but it is more severe in pregnant women and may become chronic in immunosuppressed individuals. Hepatitis E is transmitted via the fecal oral route and it may be passed by eating undercooked pork or shellfish. It's a single-stranded, positive sense RNA virus and a vaccine against hepatitis E is available in China. Bear in mind that some patients may be completely asymptomatic with a hepatitis infection, while some people will follow a distinct set of phases. Initially, they may have a prodromic phase where they experience flu-like non-specific symptoms like fatigue, nausea, joint pain and fever. Towards the end of this phase, they may experience liver-specific symptoms like dark urine and light-coloured stools. Following the prodrome, they may experience jaundice, which will persist after improvement of the prodromal symptoms. Patients may also experience right upper quadrant discomfort, hepatosplenomegaly, and weight loss. This phase lasts up to around four weeks. Then we have the recovery phase, where the clinical symptoms resolve, but there are still elevated liver laboratory tests or hepatomegaly. Hepatitis A is expected to fully resolve within two months, and hepatitis B cases will mostly resolve by four months. Fulminant hepatitis is another term you'll hear, and this is a life-threatening complication of acute hepatitis that is caused by a large number of hepatocytes dying. It is most frequent in co-infections or superinfections, and in pregnant women with hepatitis E. In addition to the features of acute hepatitis, it also may show easy bruising and bleeding due to coagulopathy, as well as confusion, lethargy and disorientation as a result of encephalopathy. Hepatitis is defined as chronic when it is not resolved in six months. It may be asymptomatic initially, followed by constitutional symptoms of fatigue, weight loss, fever and headache. Jaundice may also be seen here, but it is typically a sign of later stage liver disease, and therefore you may also see hirsutism and amenorrhea as well, due to the loss of the hormonal functions of the liver. Over time, patients will reach cirrhosis, a condition where the healthy liver tissue becomes replaced with scarring and fibrosis. Ascites and peripheral edema may be seen here, and possible complications include hepatorenal syndrome, varices, hepatic encephalopathy, as well as hepatocellular carcinoma. So how do these viruses lead to hepatitis? Hepatitis B and C viruses are the most studied, 
and we know that these do not cause apoptosis of the hepatocytes directly. Instead, they activate the immune system within the liver, leading to an inflammatory response, which causes the damage and cell death. As we said, some people will clear the virus and have only an acute course. In patients who end up having chronic infections, there are recurring cycles of inflammation, damage and wound healing that over time leads to scarring and fibrosis. One of the key mechanisms by which HCV and HPV become chronic is downregulation of the virus-specific T-cell response, which is marked by exhaustion and deletion of the virus-specific CD4 and CD8 cells. The damage to the liver itself mostly comes from mononuclear cells that are recruited due to the release of cytokines in response to the initial contact of these virus-specific T-cells. Cells such as the Kupfer cells, a specialized type of macrophage found in the sinusoid, stellate cells, and liver endothelial cells release these cytokines. These cytokines include interferon gamma, TNF-alpha, CXCL9, 10, and 11. The cells recruited essentially contribute to liver damage and injury without helping to clear the virus. Diagnosis of viral hepatitis is made based on a history of exposure such as intravenous drug use and sexual history, as well as clinical features and lab tests. These lab tests will include liver function panels with AST and ALT. Generally, both will be elevated, but ALT is higher typically in viral hepatitis. Viral antigens, such as the hepatitis B surface or core antigens, as well as viral DNA or RNA will be looked for in a blood test. Antiviral antibodies, like antihepatitis A or antihepatitis B surface antibodies, will also be tested. IgM are expected if the infection is less than one week in duration, while IgG antibodies are expected in later stages and resolution, and these will persist for years. As for the treatment, Hepatitis A is usually supportive, including IV hydration and adequate nutrition. Previously healthy patients with acute hepatitis B will usually recover without using antiviral therapy, but patients who have a more severe presentation may be treated with drugs like entecavir or tenofovir. In chronic cases of hepatitis B, the aim is to control viral replication and therefore limit disease progression. This is done with several medications like pegylated interferon, oral nucleoside analogues like entecavir or nucleotide analogues like tenofovir. The difference between nucleosides and nucleotides is that nucleosides contain a nitrogenous base and a 5-carbon sugar, while a nucleotide has a nitrogenous base, a 5-carbon sugar and a phosphate group. Chronic hepatitis C requires antiviral therapy. Recently, Direct-acting antivirals have been introduced that clear the infection in 90% of people. These include simeprevir, sofosbuvir, and ledisprevir, among others. Previously, the aim was to prevent progression to hepatocellular carcinoma, and agents like pegylated interferon and ribavirin were used. Hepatitis D lacks effective treatments, and interferon alpha has been shown to be temporarily effective. Hepatitis E is similar to A, where the treatment is supportive, involving adequate hydration and nutrition. Hospitalization may be needed for pregnant women or very severe cases.